What's up guys, Ryan here. Welcome back to my Amazon FBA mini series. Now recently Amazon was in the news. They said that they stopped accepting FBA inbound shipments for non-essential items through April 5th. That is why I am continuing to push this little mini series along because April 5th is not that far out into the distant future. Also, if you're looking to learn FBA, it's going to take a lot more time than two weeks to get to the point where your inbound shipments would be reaching the FBA centers. So you should be in good shape, but obviously news can change after the date I release this video. So just make sure you're paying attention. That's another benefit of, you know, if you were to join my course being in the private Facebook group, I would keep you up to date on things like this. Um, also just updating you on my sales. I have sold over a thousand dollars today already. So while the world is kind of going through a little bit of turmoil, um, you know, I'm still making sales through FBA. So this is part three. It is the product research phase. Now, before we start real quick, uh, my name is Ryan Hogue. I've sold over $1.4 million on Amazon to date, and I've been teaching college level courses since age 25. So I'm in my sixth year. The reason I share that is because I can teach you how to sell on Amazon. I have a free seven day mini course on my website, and there's always a link below in the description. And I publish transparent monthly passive income reports to my blog on the first or second day of each month. I also do a YouTube video, so just subscribe and you'll be notified when I drop that. But if you want to see the historical data of my climb, I, as an FBA seller, it's all out there. And last but not least, I do have a full Amazon course that I spent over a year writing. I believe it's the most thorough Amazon course out there. And so far, uh, people have been doing great with it. They've been launching their first product, their second product, third product, and making sustainable recurring passive income, launching their own branded products on Amazon, on the world's number one marketplace. Last, find your why. Now, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. The Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett himself, famously said this, and this quote really struck something within me and it's been with me ever since I first heard it and it's what motivated me to grind super hard while working two jobs to build up other passive income streams so that I'm not solely reliant on any one income stream and uh, for me that's my why but you need to find yours as well to really dive in with passion and uh, pursue your business goals. All right let's jump into product research for Amazon FBA. We're not just looking for any product, we're looking for qualified products. Now, there are tools out there that will make our lives so much easier when it comes to finding uh, what we consider to be qualified products. Now, the two that I wanna highlight in today's video are Jungle Scout and AMZ Scout. And this is kind of the workflow that we are gonna follow. Now, in part two, go check that out if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen it yet. There should be a link below as well, but in part two, we used the product database. This generated product ideas for us after we input certain criteria for those products. Um, and by the way, this product database, it's not like an Amazon sanctioned thing. This is created by the developers at AMZ Scout and Jungle Scout, where they're essentially trying to replicate Amazon's catalog in their database and then allow us to data mine that catalog replication for certain products that fit criteria that we define. Now, obviously, if you've seen part two, you know what I'm talking about. We had a bunch of filters that we could apply to filter out search results and expedite the process of finding potentially good fit product ideas. But now we are moving into the uh, part three, which is taking that list of ideas and validating them using the Chrome extensions. Now, AMZ Scout and Jungle Scout both have Chrome extensions that will, again, expedite the process for us and assist us in making good decisions because it is easy to, uh, well, you don't wanna to be too reliant on the Chrome extension, but you also don't wanna be, you don't wanna dump $1,000 or $2,000 into a product if it's your first product without the assistance of one of these tools, in my personal opinion. Uh, I think if you're a first timer, it's definitely worth using them. And I'm gonna jump into the pricing in a second. So Jungle Scout, if you uh, do the annual subscription, it only comes out to $19 a month, but you can also just pay monthly and use it as needed. Uh, but I believe, so they've recently been like restructuring their pricing and their product bundles, but what we're really gonna need is the product database, 
and the Chrome extension. And if you can get it for one month for like 30 or 40 bucks and you just want to see if you can knock everything out in one month, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, obviously the annual plan for 50% off is the logical investment. AMZ Scout, they are slightly less if you pay yearly. Um, you can actually see that they have a very similar offer page to Jungle Scout. You see it says pay yearly, save 50%. It's pretty funny. Um, but they have reduced their monthly pricing if you join the uh, annual plan to $14.99. Now, personally, I like both tools. I will show you both tools in this uh, lecture. But Jungle Scout ran their own they ran their own test, but it was not just a Jungle Scout test. They had uh, users of Jungle Scout and people on their email list volunteer their actual data from what they've been selling on Amazon. And then Jungle Scout did a comparison using real data from a multitude of different sellers selling in different categories. They compared all the different product research tools and Chrome extensions and were able to create a list of the most accurate and you know, this is why you may say, well, is it accurate or not? Because Jungle Scout, of course, came out on top. But, um, you know, assuming that everything was was done correctly, which I have no reason to believe that Jungle Scout would skew that data, um, then Jungle Scout would earn the title as the most accurate product research tool. So you may want to consider just paying the extra $4 and uh, using them since their projections, I guess, are supposed to be the most accurate. All right, did you do your homework? If you recall, we ended the last lecture with a homework assignment. You were supposed to find a or create a list of 40 different products. Now, does this mean we're selling 40 different products? Of course not. But if you bring that in and you're prepared to follow along with this lecture, I'm going to show you how you can uh, cross out products from that list that are not optimal fits. And then hopefully we can... Uh, refine that list to maybe like five products or even, you know, eventually we're, we're only honing in on one product, but let's just say we refine it to like the five best products. And then we bring that into lecture four, where we will start getting the actual like financial numbers needed to project profitability before we even spend a dime. All right, let's recap now from lecture two. We said, what makes an ideal product? Things that we bring personal knowledge and expertise to high demand, low competition products with low seasonality so that we have consistent sales year round. Uh, brand potential is always nice because selling on Amazon in 2020 and beyond, you wanna be brand registered because it also affords you um, protections as well as enhanced brand content on your listings which will increase your conversion rate. Uh, you want it to pass the shoebox test. Essentially, does it fit in a shoebox? Can it pass the drop test? Can we drop it from five feet or so without it breaking? And price point being in the twenty to fifty dollar range, that's just a, you know, again that can that can change with you and your budget uh, limitations. Or if you have no limitations, maybe you look at a price point above fifty bucks. You know, what to avoid? So we're gonna avoid fragile items at all cost. Trust me, uh, print on demand items definitely do not want to be competing with print on demand items because they don't have to hold inventory, but we will if we're stocking them at FBA. Oversized items because it's going to cost more with inbound shipments. Items made from chemicals because you have to provide extra information and you're subject to extra restrictions. It's not worth it for your first product. And items that include batteries because the battery itself is subject to additional um, restrictions. All right, are you guys ready for a live demo? We're gonna do some live product research using the different tools that I covered. So before I jump over to Amazon, I just wanted to make a quick suggestion related to eBay. Now I know no one shops on eBay anymore for some reason, except me, I love eBay. Uh, but there are sellers on eBay that I think are either like Chinese factories or they're people that are like well-connected that can source products from various factories. So for instance, the one I'm looking at here, it's called US underscore great deal. They have 237,000 uh, feedback score. So they've made a ton of sales and they just sell a bunch of different products on eBay. Now I'm guessing since eBay does have an insertion fee that they're not paying the insertion fee for products that aren't selling. So what these guys are doing for us is they're telegraphing products that sell and making it easy for us to skim their catalog of successful products. By the way, like on occasion, you'll see eBay give us indicators like nine plus watching right here. You see this? 
uh, even though it's, you know, home theater seating, so maybe we'll skip that one, but it's like every now and then we get these little red text indicators saying, hey, look here, this is a popular product. So I just wanted to throw that out there as a quick idea of where you can go for product ideas. Um, find one of these uh, multi, I don't even know what to call them, like stores on eBay that sell so many different products. Like they have probably 10 plus pages this long of a bunch of different products that we'd probably never think of. All right, jumping over to Amazon. Now, I really quickly wanted to just show off the AMZ Scout Pro niche idea button. Now, for some reason today, of course, when I'm recording the video, AMZ Scout Pro is not working for validating niches, but I just wanted to show you that if you open up the AMZ Scout Pro Chrome extension, there's a little niche idea button right here above my finger, and you can just click it and it'll generate for you different ideas of products you can sell that tend to have a seven or above saturation score, which again, if you remember from last lecture, we are really aiming to find high demand, low competition products. Um, you don't want to be fully trusting in a saturation score from any Chrome extension because you want to do some research yourself as well. But if we're doing the initial skim through your 40 products from homework, it's okay to just look at the saturation score and see like, Oh, if it's five or below, just get rid of it. But if it says like eight out of 10, don't just assume that that's accurate. Actually do your own manual um, research as well. But for instance, like bamboo utensils looks great. Um, this would be lightweight, cheap to source. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, you can do plenty of research. Um, also, if you like this product, you know, put it on your list for the uh, fourth installment of this series when I walk us through how to interview suppliers and then also get a little bit more data from the suppliers as to things like how much is it going to cost us to source this product? And then we can start looking at existing listings and projecting the financials and see if we can sell it profitably. All right. I also wanted to show you uh, how to use Jungle Scout to validate a product. And I'm looking at hand sanitizer specifically um, for a reason that I'll share in a second. But you can just search the product. As it starts to load, you can click to run the Jungle Scout Chrome extension in your taskbar. And as it combs through the results, it's going to figure out what to rate this niche or this product. So it gives us data such as average monthly sales. So that's actually raw sales. And that's based on the BSR average, I believe, of the products on this page after our keyword search. So essentially what it's doing is Amazon exposes the uh, BSR bestseller rank, which is an indicator of sales velocity. And I don't know if this is just looking at like the top five or if it's averaging out the entire page, which is probably more likely, um, which is why you can also like click one of these results. And from here, if we run this and check it against the aggregate data and we just look at the bestseller, we will most likely see much better uh, sales data. For instance, this one says 19,221 sales per month. And this says average monthly sales, 3,236. So a far cry from the 19,221, although that listing is pulling this average up. Uh, average sales rank, 31,600. Now, I don't put too much faith into that. What I like to do is I like to actually like eyeball the search results and using the DS Amazon quick view Chrome extension, which I talked about in the first installment of my mini series, it injects the bestseller rank underneath the products. So you see above my head, like right here above my finger where it says 1,153, that's the bestseller rank for that product. And I like to just do a quick skim of the search results. And then I formulate my own idea of what the average bestseller rank is. Since Amazon keyword searches are not perfect and not all of the products are gonna be directly comp competing with what we're intending to sell. But what we see here, a nine high demand, low competition, that's as good as I've ever seen. I've never seen a 10 out of 10. So this is pretty much the ideal product right now. And um, obviously it's a little bit time sensitive. If you guys are watching this video in the future, uh, hopefully, you know, times are a little bit better and there's not a crazy virus going around the world. Uh, but hand sanitizer is in high demand to combat the virus and help people with their, you know, sanitization needs. Did I say that word right? 
sanitization needs? I think so. All right. Uh, so hand sanitizer though, I really like this product and for the mini series purposes, I want to use this to show you guys the rest of the, uh, the mini series. And part of that is because, um, I'm going to help bring a new brand of hand sanitizers to Amazon. Uh, that's going to be, I'm not going to have to source it from overseas. I actually have a manufacturer within the United States. Uh, it is not my brand or my product, but, uh, I've been essentially recruited to assist them in getting it listed on Amazon and getting it ranked number one. We don't want anything short of that. And uh, really just helping, you know, doing doing our part to help other Americans during this time of need with something that will hopefully help reduce the spread of germs. But anyways, to loop back to product research, uh, you want to aim to find something that is an opportunity score of seven or higher, in my personal opinion. Uh, eight is even better, but then also, you know, refine your list, cut your list down, but don't think that right now we need to find a single product. Now, I know a lot of YouTube videos kind of imply that this is all you need to do to find your product and there's so much more to it, which is why you need to pay attention to the rest of my mini series because, you know, part of what sets my FBA course apart from most of them is that like, I don't skip the, the financials validation step. Uh, I have a really nice spreadsheet dedicated to crunching those numbers for you pretty much on autopilot. You just have to input a couple things. I'll show you how to get the, those data points. But as far as like right now, you really need to just refine that list of 40 products that you built. And you know, if you want to come to eBay and look at sellers like this, I can put a link in the description to this seller, um, just for ideas like adjustable men, military buckle, combat waist, like a combat waistband belt buckle. I would never think of that, but who knows? Maybe that's in high demand. Like let's, let's just do a quick, a quick search. This was not planned. Uh, military buckle, mil military belts. Is that what we'd call it? Military belt buckle combat waistband. Let's try that. All right. Run jungle scout. Let's see what the opportunity score ends up being. All right, low demand, low competition. But here's the thing, we might need to change our keywords. So we can look at the highest be, uh, BSR from the search results for an idea of um, what to, what keywords to use. So it looks like tactical belt is the tactical uh, belt are probably the best keywords right here. Also, you see people committing violations on their, their images there, where somebody wrote in 20% off into the primary image. Don't do that. All right, see, we switched our keywords up. This is a good um, example of like why you can't just be instantly fully trusting of search results because you can shift a couple keywords around and then get completely different data. So this is, this is now high demand, high competition. So we got an idea from our friends, you know, shipping from China on this mega store on eBay. We searched for one of the products and we see high demand, high competition. So cross that out. That's not for us. But again, it was a free, quick, easy idea. Um, but what we're really aiming to do, guys, to wrap this up is look for seven or above opportunity score. And then also do a quick eyeball of the uh, products. Try to figure out how much competition you really have. Now, a good way to do that is to just do what I just did quick scroll through page one. Do you see any wrong products that are indexed on these keywords, but are not the same product we'd be selling? So that all looked really at a quick scroll looked pretty identical. Uh, here we're seeing like a, well, these are in the sponsored spots, but you have like a gun case and a holster for a knife. Now we're starting to get away. We're getting into like belt buckles, uh, tactical waist belt, but that looked like a vest. So on page two, it's starting to introduce more products that are not exactly what we are aiming to sell, but for the most part, still pretty on, you know, pretty accurate as far as keywords. Now we're on page three. Okay. This did say high competition. Well, if you're on page three and you're still seeing new listings of the same product we're aiming to sell, then this gives you an idea of like, 
you know, if page if page three is competitive, then it's going to be tough to rank on page one without spending a lot of money on ads. Now, these bestseller ranks are not very high either. Um, so that being said, you do not want to get stuck on page three with a low sales velocity. So it is probably a good idea, again, to move on to the next product. No shame in that. The product research phase and validation phase are where you're going to spend the most time, guys. Just accept that up front. By doing a good job here, though, you're going to protect yourself against losing money in the future. So take your time, especially if you're going through it for the first time. All right, I had to cut and update the part three to say part four because this is part three that you're watching right now. So next time in part four, we're going to go through finding and interviewing suppliers for your potential products. Now, I did say products. That's because you're going to refine your list to five, you know, give or take one or two, but you don't want to just have one product. Come with multiple products into the next uh, phase because when we interview suppliers, we're going to get data that we need to project the financials and then hopefully one product stands out from our list as the best option with the highest profit margins that we're projecting using real data from the suppliers and data from Amazon based on evaluating our competition. So your homework is refine that list of 40 to five products. And if you need new ideas, again, uh, check out our friends at eBay <laughs> or use the AMZ Scout uh, niche idea button, which you can use for free, I think, or at least on a free trial. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching till the end. Remember, if I can do it, you can too. If you watch till the end and you're not subscribed, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll also get notified when I drop my next income report. I know you guys are loving those videos because the view count is always insane within the first 24 hours. So thank you guys for uh, always supporting me and watching the videos. And uh, yeah, if you want to be alerted, actually alerted via email, click the little bell icon that pops up after you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're liking these videos in these series of uh, this series, hit the like button as well so that YouTube will promote it. I put a lot of time and effort into these and it would mean the world to me to help get these videos exposure so it can help as many people as possible, guys. And thank you for watching till the end. Last thing before I sign off, my Amazon FBA course will show you everything you need to know in the order you need to know it. It's extremely detail oriented. And if you join, you will get where you want to be, I promise. Also, the price is going up when I wrap up this mini series. So if you take advantage now, you're locking in at a lower price. It's, by the way, it's at a discount compared to most courses out there, even though it's better than them. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching until the end. I'll see you at the next video. Passive Income School is open. Enroll now at Ryan'sMethod.com. Thank you.